This is the machine age. Machines have become such a part of our present day lives that what was considered a mechanical marvel by a past generation is commonplace to us. Machines have changed our way of living in the home. Most of us use machines of one kind or another in going to and from work each day. And machines help many of us to earn our living. Without proper care, these machines, which would normally last for years, become useless scrap, actual liabilities at a time when they are more important than ever. Some of us who earn our living with the help of these machines often forget the three deadly enemies of machinery. Dust, dirt, and carelessness. In these days of overworked machines and tired workers, the damage caused can be serious. Typewriters and other office machines are a part of the daily life of many of us, and we must be continually on guard against the enemies of these machines. New typewriters are not being manufactured for the duration of the war. Repair parts are hard to get, and those servicemen who are still on the job are burdened as never before. The work done on the office front is a very important part of the war program. If this work fails to meet demands, our progress in the war will be seriously hindered. It is therefore the patriotic duty of each of us to see that our typewriters and other office machines are given the best possible care at all times. We must keep them running. Do you keep your typewriter covered when not in use? We shouldn't have to ask this question, but then on the other hand, we've seen typewriters that looked like this. Whenever your typewriter isn't being used for any length of time, you should center the carriage and cover the machine, not only at night, but in the daytime also. The cover helps to prevent dust settling on vital parts. The cleaning operations necessary to keep a typewriter in good running condition can be divided into two groups, those that should be done daily and those that need only be done once a week. Before you start your day's work, dust your typewriter with a soft cloth. And when the day's work is finished, dust it again. Use the cloth so that the dust falls away from the machine. If the carriage rails or the tracks on which the carriage runs are allowed to become dusty and dirty, the movement of the carriage is retarded. To prevent this, the rails should be wiped daily with a soft, dry cloth. With the carriage at the extreme left, wipe the right end of the rails. With the carriage at the extreme right, wipe the left end of the rails. Rails vary on different makes of typewriters. Some prefer to brush the rails rather than wipe. This is all right, but be sure to brush away from the machine. An accumulation of dust and dirt in the bell crank segment slows machine action. Dust getting into the type bar segment often causes sticky type bars. A daily dusting of the segment with a brush will help to prevent type bars from sticking and there will be less chance of dust getting inside. Brush with a forward motion like this. A clear, well-typed letter can't be made with dirty type.
Here's what dirty type causes. Type should be cleaned daily, or perhaps twice a day if the amount of typing warrants or if stencils are being written. Use the brush dry. Do not use liquid solvents. Brush type with a forward stroke, brushing the particles toward the front of the machine. Care should be taken in brushing letters like A, E, and O, which fill in easily. That's all there is to the daily brush and clean. Once a week, if your typewriter can be detached from the desk, move it and dust underneath. If the dust stays there, it won't do much harm, but there's always the possibility that air circulation or a sudden draft may blow this dust accumulation into the inner workings. Wipe gently, but wipe the dust and dirt off. Don't merely agitate the dust. If the platen can be removed, as in the L.C. Smith, Remington, and Electromatic, it should be taken out weekly and cleaned. While the platen is out, you can remove eraser waste and paper sizing from the dustpan. And also clean the small paper feed and pressure rolls. Never operate the line space lever on any machine when the platen has been removed. If you do, these space paws will have assumed a position which causes a lot. and you will not be able to replace the platen. On the electromatic, the feed rolls can also be removed for cleaning. If the platen cannot be removed, clean it in position. Moisten a cloth slightly with denatured alcohol and rub the roller from end to end. Turn slowly so that all of the roller is cleaned. Even though you never type on a bare platen, the sizing which rubs off the paper should be cleaned off the rubber. Paper sizing causes the platen to be glossy and slippery. The life of the rubber is lengthened when the platen is kept clean. An important thing these days. Wipe the carriage rails with a cloth containing a minimum of oil. The small amount of oil that they get from this once a week wiping will make the carriage run smoothly. Use oil sparingly. If the procedures just shown are carefully and conscientiously carried out, dust and dirt will be pretty well taken care of. But we still have carelessness to contend with. And in these days, perhaps this is the greatest enemy of all. Carelessness in the office includes a great number of things. Things that are done thoughtlessly, things that are done improperly, and things that are not done at all, just plain neglect. One thing that many of us fail to realize is that cold machines don't work well, and that often a typewriter or other office machine will not work properly if it is operated in a below normal temperature. In these days of rationed fuel and reduced heat, Wait until the temperature in the room reaches 60 to 65 degrees before using your office machine. Keep your typewriter from direct sunlight and heat, as this will harden the platen and dry the ribbon, thus shortening the life of both. The question of whether or not operators should oil typewriters has never been satisfactorily settled. Too much oil is as bad as none. If your machine needs a general oiling, it is best to let the typewriter service man do it. Typewriters need little oil. An excess of oil in the wrong places will cause a machine to collect dust, get gummy, and wear needlessly. Too much oil will also splash on copy and platen. The motor on the electromatic should be oiled once a month. Five drops of oil in each of the oil tubes leading to the motor will do the trick. Platens and feed rolls, because they are made of rubber, 
are difficult if not impossible to obtain. They should be given special care so that they last. Oil will ruin rubber, so don't get oil on your platen. Excess fingering will also cause damage because of the oil left by the fingers. When your typewriter is not in use, release the main feed rolls from contact with the platen by pressing the paper release lever. It is located here on the underwood. The same lever is placed a little differently on the royal. Here is a platen and a set of feed rolls that have had hard use and careless treatment. This can be caused by wax and oil. In an ordinary day's work, the type strike the platen many thousands of times. To protect the platen as much as possible from this continued striking, use a backing sheet of extra heavy paper when making a single copy. Manila paper is good for this. And remember, the backing sheet can be used again and again. Typewriter abuse is often due to lack of thought don't strike the keys without paper in the machine. This is hard on the platen and also leaves an ink deposit which may spoil future work. Paper slipping is caused by a worn or glossy platen. Many typists do not realize that yanking paper out of a typewriter causes unnecessary wear and rubs paper sizing into the rubber, thus making it glossy and slippery. Fast and efficient operation can be accomplished by pushing the paper release lever and raising the paper bale. Some people still make erasures without moving the carriage. When this is done, the eraser and paper particles fall into the machine and can cause damage later. Always move the carriage to the right or left when you erase so that the particles fall out of the machine. An old, worn ribbon spoils the appearance of a letter. Don't attempt to utilize the lower half of your ribbon by switching the ribbon indicator to the red position. When you make this switch, the ribbon guide moves further and retards the key action. A heavier touch is required on the keys and your work is slowed down. It's much better to reverse the ribbon Some typewriters use reversible ribbon spools. Notice that the top and bottom of these spools are the same. This applies to Burroughs, Remington, Woodstock, and Underwood. With this type of spool, ribbon reversing is a simple operation. However, it is only recommended when continuous high-speed work is being done. With ordinary use, reversing is not advisable as the ink in the lower half of the ribbon is absorbed by the upper half. Regardless of the care given a ribbon, it eventually reaches the point where replacement is necessary and the ribbon must be changed. The ribbon changing operation is essentially the same on all typewriters, but because of differences in design, the methods vary. Each typewriter company furnishes instructions on ribbon changing. Familiarize yourself with the method of changing ribbon on the typewriter you use so that you can change quickly and with the least amount of effort. If you have trouble with ribbon changing, consult the service man at the first opportunity. The first step in changing a ribbon is to wind all the ribbon on one spool. Then, if the machine is so equipped, lift off the spool covers. The spools are now ready to be removed. Depress the shift lock key. Place the ribbon indicator at red position. Press the two center type bars down, thus raising the vibrator. Before removing the old ribbon, notice how it's threaded. The new ribbon should be threaded in the same manner.
Then remove the old ribbon. Be sure that the empty spool is always on the left spindle before inserting the new ribbon. Place the new ribbon spool on the right spindle. On the woodstock, a small trigger in the spool cup controls the reverse mechanism. When placing the spool in position on this machine, be sure that the trigger enters the square opening in the spool. Otherwise, the ribbon will not reverse. On the Burroughs typewriter, the spool holder also has a trigger. which fits into an opening in the spool. To operate the reverse mechanism, underwood ribbons are equipped with a grommet. Be sure this grommet is placed between the spool and the reverse mechanism lever. Other typewriters have non-reversible spools in which both faces of the spool are not alike such as the L.C. Smith, and the Royal. New ribbons for the Electromatic may come to you on a wooden spool. In such a case, Insert the ribbon with the wooden spool in the right spool holder. Before removing the old ribbon, attach the new ribbon to the end of the old ribbon with scotch tape. Pull the new ribbon through by hand until enough is through to attach to the spool. Then let the ribbon run off the wooden spool as you type. When the wooden spool is empty, it is ready to be replaced. Electromatic ribbon spools differ from spools used on other machines. When inserting, be sure the teeth point toward the platen. When a new ribbon is put in the electromatic, it should curve down and out like this, so there is no danger of being hooked on the top cover catch. If you use a two-color ribbon on your typewriter, remember that the red, or least used color, always is at the bottom. If you are typing with a single color ribbon, always set the ribbon indicator on black so you will type on the upper part of the ribbon. Don't throw your old spools or ribbons away. Give them to your supervisor or save them to turn over to the supply room. A special cleaner for cleaning type is available in limited quantity at the supply room. Before writing stencils, this cleaner should be used to clean the type on your machine. After stencils are written, 
This cleaner should also be used to remove wax from the type. In writing lengthy stencils, it is well to clean the type two or three times during the process. After using the type cleaner, it should be kneaded so that the ink and wax will be absorbed. If your machine is used constantly for writing stencils and not given the proper care, the life of the feed rolls and platen is shortened as the stencil deposits oils and chemicals on the rubber parts. To overcome this, feed a piece of blotting paper, letterhead size, through the machine half a dozen times. Do this once in the morning, at noon, and in the afternoon, and leave it in the machine overnight with the pressure rolls released. If you only write a stencil occasionally, you can clean the rollers by running a blotter through the machine a few times after the stencil has been written. While a typewriter is made to stand up under hard usage and while it is built to last, carelessness, thoughtlessness, and neglect can ruin or wreck it. Don't lean against your machine. Look what happened here. This doesn't help a typewriter much. Some of these type bars may be bent so badly that they will not operate. Even a slight bend will throw the type out of alignment and make a poor appearing letter. You couldn't take much pride in a letter that looked like this. Just a case of bent type bars caused by carelessness. The convenience of resting on the carriage of your typewriter, especially when off-center, is hardly worth the inconvenience and damage it causes. And if a typewriter should fall, then there is trouble. It's usually too late to worry, and it's much better to take necessary precautions to prevent falls. Remember that small typewriter stands are often top-heavy. When you push them about, hold the typewriter firmly so the stand can't tip over. It's good insurance to hold your machine on the stand so it can't overturn. If you use a drop-head desk, be sure the machine is firmly fastened to the platform. Don't run a chance of your typewriter sliding off when you close the desk. And if you should leave your carriage off-center, this may happen. It would probably mean a broken carriage. Be careful about moving a typewriter on a pull-out desk if you have to look for a pencil or eraser. Your machine can easily fall off. Don't throw a girl out of work and hinder office production by being the cause of this type of sabotage. The typewriter is a relatively light machine with 1,000 to 3,000 parts. Many of the parts are small and light like these. These parts are fitted together with precision and only a small amount of energy is required to operate them properly. A typewriter won't benefit from this kind of handling any more than will your violin, your radio, or your last pair of nylon stockings. Don't leave your electromatic without turning off the switch. When you start work again, turn on the switch, and before typing, Use the space bar to see if you have current. If there is no current, see if you are plugged in. There are many things that can be easily done to keep a typewriter in good running condition. But don't try to be a typewriter mechanic. A screwdriver in inexperienced hands can do more harm in a few seconds than dust and dirt can do in a few months. If you've cared properly for your machine and it still doesn't run right, call the service man. The transcribing machine should be covered when not in use and kept clean by daily dusting. Fine wax scrapings will collect under here where the transcribing jewel is located. Blow these shavings out 
or dust them out with a soft brush. Don't forget to keep the boss's dictation machine dusted. Be sure the chips or shavings which collect in the pan are removed. Also, wipe out the mouthpiece daily with a clean cloth moistened with alcohol. Don't attempt to oil your transcribing machine. It doesn't need much and the serviceman can do it better than you. If mechanical trouble develops, don't try to fix things. It's best to call the serviceman. The transcribing machine is built for service, but it should be carefully used. The transcribing jewel is the most important part of this machine. Don't abuse it. Place the jewel carefully in the transcribing position when you are ready to start. Be sure the jewel is in the off position when you insert or remove the cylinder. Treat your transcriber carefully and it will give you years of service. Cylinders require special care as they scratch easily and break or chip if dropped. Keep them in their cartons. Cylinders which have stood several months or more should be resurfaced before using. Carelessness can easily destroy important dictation and cause great inconvenience and loss of valuable time. To handle a cylinder properly, the first two fingers should be placed in the end. Don't handle the surface of the cylinder, whether it is dictated or shaved. If a cylinder is left on the mandrel overnight and there is a considerable change in temperature, there's a possibility of the cylinder splitting. If important dictation is on the cylinder, you're in trouble when this happens. Keep cylinders away from excessive heat. They are made of wax and will warp and break when placed on the mandrel. Resurfacing or shaving cylinders is a simple maintenance function that should be understood by all who use transcribing machines. Both Dictaphone and Ediphone make their own shapers and either make is easy to operate. To use this Dictaphone shaver, first press the gate latch and swing the gate wide open. Place the cylinder on the mandrel, pushing it firmly in place. Swing the end gate shut, automatically locking the gate switch. Push the gauge rod down with the index finger until it touches the surface of the cylinder. Place the thumb under the gauge rod lock and press this lock upward, thus locking the rod in correct position for shaving the cylinder. Raise the carriage arm as high as it will go and move the carriage to the extreme right end of the machine. Place the carriage gently on the rail. When the carriage has traveled to the extreme left, additional cuts may be taken if necessary by lifting the carriage upward and moving it to the extreme right. When the cut has been made, open the end gate. This releases the cylinder. It should then be removed by inserting the first two fingers of the right hand in the end.
Oil the Dictaphone shaver after every 40 or 50 shavings. Put a drop of oil in each oil cup. And a drop of oil on the carriage rail. Dust the shaver carefully after using to remove the wax particles that collect. And keep the machine covered when not in use. The Edaphone shaver is similar in construction to the Dictaphone. To place the cylinder on the machine, first pull this locking bolt to open the end gate. When placing the cylinder on the mandrel, make sure that this arrow is even with the line on the mandrel. Lock the end gate by closing the locking bolt. Move the carriage to the middle of the cylinder. and pull the knife bar locking lever forward as you press down. This locks the shaving knife in position. Move the carriage to the extreme right and place it on the front guide rail. Now turn on the motor. As the mandrel revolves, the carriage feeds across the cylinder and the surface is shaved. If further polish is desired, lift the second cut lever, move the carriage to the right, and repeat the operation. To remove the cylinder, stop the motor and pull the locking bolt forward. The cylinder is ejected by pushing the ejector lever. It can then be taken off easily. Blank dictaphone and ediphone cylinders may be used interchangeably on either dictation machine and either shaving machine will shave both makes of cylinders. If both dictation machines are in use in an office, it is not necessary to sort the resurfaced cylinders for any particular machine. Before records dictated on a machine of one make can be satisfactorily transcribed on a machine of the other make, certain adjustments should be made by a serviceman on all dictation and transcribing machines in the office. After these adjustments have been made, cylinders dictated on any dictating machine can be transcribed on any transcribing machine. After every 40 or 50 shavings, the Edaphone shaver should be oiled by placing a drop of oil in each oil cup. The shaving process deposits fine shaving particles on the shaver. Dust your shaver carefully after using. Empty the shavings from the paper container in the dust drawer whenever necessary. Adding machines and calculators need little attention, provided they are given ordinary care. Dust with a soft cloth or brush and keep them covered when not in use. Don't let dust accumulate on the key stems, as it will slow the action of the machine. 
Keep these stems free of oil and they will not collect dust and dirt. The appearance of your typewriter and other office machines, their general condition and the ease with which they operate reflects in the type of work you turn out and is a definite indication of the kind of an office housekeeper you are. Today you cannot afford to risk the life or service of your machines by carelessness or neglect. You must not permit your professional ability or your office production to be handicapped by poorly working machines. Only by properly caring for and carefully using your office machines can you hope to defeat the ever-present enemies of the office front that are striving to ruin your machine, slow your work, and prevent you from doing your best. Enemies that only you can effectively combat and control, dust, dirt, and carelessness.